Good evening and welcome to this final episode of season one. But don't worry, we will be back next year. Well, actually at the end of this year in August uh, for season two where we're going to start uh, with some brand new recipes, even go into breakfast. If you can believe that, we're going to uh, venture into a new avenue. So uh, to celebrate this final episode, it's near the Super Bowl and basketball season is of course at a high note. So we're going to celebrate sports all together. Hence the uh, New England Patriots t-shirt and uh, as you'll see uh, from our guest chefs, they are also sporting uh, team apparel. So uh, right now I'm going to invite some of our guest chefs back. Amanda, and so if uh, Amanda will come on. <laughs> And uh, Anne, of course, Brenna is back again for Woo! another episode. Woo! And uh, for this final episode, we also have Julie, that, uh, and she's going to be live on the show here. So let's give her a round And finally, Tim, he is here, and he's going to do a fun segment later on, but I won't spoil it. Come here, Tim. Unfortunately, uh, Kelsey is out on assignments, uh, so we do miss her, but she will be back for season two to continue her Get Smart segment. So first off, we're going to start with uh, a recipe, uh, well actually a couple of recipes from our guest chef Brenna here, and then we'll get to Amanda after that, and finally I'll uh, add on an artichoke jalapeno dip. So Brenna, tell us what you're going to be doing. Um, we're going to make some cucumber canopies with some whipped feta topping and some fun little baseball or softball themed decorations. And we're going to make a taco ring, which is kind of fun for any tailgates or before or after game meals. So. Very good, very good. And what are you going to be featuring, Amanda? And I will be making some homemade hummus oh. from scratch. My mm -hmm. goodness, mm -hmm. that you guys are in for a treat and it's going to lead to a touchdown of a party for all the fans. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back and we'll start cooking with bread. Welcome back. Now we're going to head right over here to Brenna. She's going to show us how to do that taco ring she was talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, to start out, um, we've preheated the oven to 375 degrees. Simple as that. We have a pizza stone here, and I've covered it in foil, and we've greased it. What we have is actually crescent rolls. Um, you don't have to buy name brand. You can buy whatever you prefer with crescent rolls, buttery, flaky. I just bought basic ones. And we're going to actually separate them apart. Okay. Kevin, you can grab that set there. And we're making them, there's two packs here, so that means 16 rolls, and we're making them in kind of like a sun formation. Okay. You can see, and it's okay, they're gonna hang off the side. We want that. If they don't hang, we should be a little bit worried. Last one. So placing those, overlapping them just a okay. bit, and a little making bit more. sure, oh, yeah, and curve it over. Okay. Get them all on there and overlap them pretty well. So this is going to be a fun dish for us to make today. Um, what it is, is it's a nice, basically easy hand cut. You can top your own kind of tacos on this. So we have all 16 pieces here on the tray. It looks just like a sun, <laughs> like we would hope for a nice, you know, game day, right? So next we're going to take the beef that we've actually already prepped before you all got here. Oops, you joined us. Basic taco, we have about a pound of ground beef. Um, extra lean. Mm -hmm. I believe you got it from your favorite store, didn't you? Yes, yeah. As always, from Roth's, once again, we got Painted Hills Beef, which is my favorite. I totally recommend it. Uh, so, yes, like you said, it was just over a pound, and we uh, seasoned it just with a basic, um, in this case, McCormick taco seasoning. Mm -hmm. And so if you have leftover taco meat, say about a pound, then this is a great purpose for it later on. And we're just piling up a good amount right around the bases of each of these pieces. Mm. I know nothing like some good taco meat. We're just stacking it in there, and it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll clean it up a little before we get cooking. Okay. And so, what's going to go into the center? Is well, the center is the fun part. When we're done cooking, we'll wrap actually the sun ray pieces around the meat, and it'll make a perfect kind of wreath or ring around our meat. And when it's done cooking, you place all the toppings in the center. 
So we'll have lettuce, green peppers, olives, sour cream, tomatoes, you name it. You can put anything in the center you'd like to add to yours. Sounds scrumptious. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get that going. And this is, this is the hard part, right? <laughs> yeah. Getting all the meat to fit. If you want to scoop yeah. up there. Finish that. Finish that up for me. Be perfect. I'm going to check and make sure the oven's getting ready. And uh, as always, when you use ground beef, uh, there's always a option to put some ground turkey in as a leaner uh, choice as well so you don't always have to do ground beef. We, I chose ground beef for this recipe because it is game day and you do need something to stick to those ribs a little bit and get you through. Especially during Kevin's favorite football season, those are longer games than say baseball or basketball usually. Unless maybe you go into extra innings, I don't know, or double <laughs> overtime. Who knows, right? Well, in talking about football, stay tuned because at the end, each of us are going to give our Super Bowl predictions. Ooh. So that will be a fun way to end this episode. Perfect. And so now we have meat in the center of our sun, right? So we're going to take the pieces around and just wrap them over and we're going to tuck them a little bit. Going slowly. And they can touch a little bit. Some will overlap. Some will be pretty and wide. won't they kind of... Um, uh, expand as they, they bake, right? Yeah. We do want to make sure all this excess meat sitting on the outside does get in though because someone's going to lose out on the meat in their taco pieces, huh? We don't yeah. want that. This is always a good one at my family. And you don't have to do this recipe for game day either. This can be a good family meal, something to set and the kids like it. It's a little bit more fun and interactive around the dinner table. Mm -hmm. So we have this all pieced together. Now we have our taco ring. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this in the oven and we're gonna start out by cooking it about 18 minutes and check from there and see if it's nice and golden brown. If not, you can cook up to about 22 minutes for this one. Perfect. Okay. All right, and uh, while that's baking, we're gonna go over and uh, do the cucumbers. Ooh, the cucumber canopies. I'm gonna wash my hands so I did get some taco on there. All right, so just to find another twist, um, I learned this canopy recipe from my aunt. Um, you take slices of cucumbers about a half inch thick. I've peeled some and the rest I actually took a fork along the edge and it kind of gives it this nice rosette design on the outside. Do you pull the fork down on the yes, side? Yes, I pull it all the way down the side of the okay. cucumber and it kind of gives it a nicer look. What I've done here is on the website you'll have the recipe for this. It's um, six ounces of feta about there two ounces of softened cream cheese and about two tablespoons of lemon juice mixed with a little bit of salt and pepper. And you whip that together in a food processor and that's what makes our feta whip. Mm. I've actually just used a Ziploc bag and I put a piping tip in it, which makes it a lot easier and cleanup is a lot faster <laughs> afterwards. And it's a lot cheaper than buying the piping bags themselves. So I have them and I've prepped some on here. Um, the ones that I've peeled the outside, I've put little baseballs um, they have the feta whip on them and we have sun-dried tomatoes and then the ones with the peels on them We've put basil on not everyone. I know likes basil So we've done like a green grass with a little baseball in it So I'm going to show you how to <laughs> make creative. those we do have the little baseballs prepped on this side to make the green grass You just go around and fill it in. Uh oh, we got a bird in the field <laughs> And then once we get that going, we're going to cover that with the basil. And okay. I have a little bit in our prep bowl here. Perfect. And you'll sprinkle that on top of those. It's just roughly chopped basil. We use about probably a quarter of a cup to a half a cup, depending on how much basil you like on there. My family are basil lovers. Not everyone is. Mm -hmm. That's true. It is more of a, a rich herb, so not everyone likes the full flavor. but. In a, in a pinch, I think you can get by by doing half and half, and I'm sure that most of these will get, will get eaten. So. All right. And then what we're going to finish these off with is the same little ball design we did here, but we're going to put it in our grass on the field, right? So I'll put a little ball there, circle them up. Plus, this just means these people get a little extra feta whip. Mm -hmm. Can't hate that at all. Mm -mm. And so to design those, I've thinly chopped up some of our red peppers, and we're going to lay them just like on a 
little bulb. We have the little lines on it. So we're going to go through. It's such a cool design. It's fun. And of course, you can add protein to this dish too. My dad enjoys prosciutto a little bit on top. You can add bacon if you're a bacon lover. Whatever you have on hand really can work out with these. It does give it that Mediterranean feel. Just getting some of those yummy flavors. And the nice thing about these is they're prepped and ready to eat at any time. So mm -hmm. your guests can come right on up, grab a ball. Sorry we don't have any bats, but you can enjoy these today. <laughs> Perfect. Well, now we're going to send it over to Julie, uh, who has some fun tips as a final segment for this season. Julie, what do you have for us? today Amanda is making some homemade hummus. Well, let's say you have a craving for it. No tahini. You don't want to run to the store. A quick substitute, just use peanut butter. Same amount of portion. So whatever, if it's a fourth a cup tahini, it'd be a fourth a cup of peanut butter. The other tip I have for you, it's kind of a nice little twist. A lot of times we use sour cream to kind of top our little Mexican dishes. For each half cup of sour cream to use a half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon of lime juice and you mix it in and it makes a nice little zing to the sour cream. That's all I have for you today. Go Broncos! <laughs> so now it's time to do the finishing touches on the taco ring. So Brenna, where do we start? We're going to start, um, you can put your topping if you're doing one. We're doing sour cream today because we have sour cream lovers in the house. You place that right in the center. We have let the ring cool probably about 10 minutes now. Nice and rested so that when we do put the greens on, they're not going to wilt away. Mm -hmm. um, next, you kind of fill around. We've drained okay. this. You're going to fill around with some lettuce right in there. And we just took iceberg lettuce ahead of it and chopped it up, cleaned it up. Don't have to pre-buy shred it. You can if you'd like. It saves you on a little prep time that way. So we're going to fill it around nice and tight. Maybe a little more. Let me do a little underneath to get a little boost. Mm -hmm. There we go. I like lettuce. We always can have a little bit extra mm -hmm. on hand. Um, we have green peppers today. We're going to sprinkle those right around the outside. Just a couple of those. And then some olives as well. Mm. And we're going to have tons of extra because we are putting the bowl in the center as a kind of a decorative piece. Another circle in my theme this week, huh? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to still have some more space around it. We do also have some tomatoes, if you want to grab those behind you. Right, where are we putting these? Just around there as well? Yeah, just sprinkle them around, right around the edges. It's pretty, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it looks delicious. It's really fun for our party, too. It's kind of festive. You can use it for the fiesta again, for a home dinner, or whatever you'd like. You can choose to opt for the cheese on the side. I think that's good, just a little. There okay. we go. You can choose to opt for the cheese on the side for those who are lactose or prefer no cheese, but I love cheese. Kevin, do you like cheese? Yes, let's go for it. Um, I'm using the Tillamook brand Mexican cheese, sticking with local, my favorite, which can also be purchased at where again? Kevin? At Ross, like always. <laughs> and uh, uh, the iceberg lettuce, purchased at Ross as well as the tomatoes. I think, still think that their produce is the best in town. So let, let's get this finished here. Just a nice little dressing of the cheese. And when people serve, they can opt to put more vegetables or cheese on their dishes. Now the fun part comes in. We're going to need a knife to cut this bad okay. boy. Grab whatever you prefer. Let's, let's get one of these long ones. Yes. Maybe. And so since it is a bread roll of rice, we're going to cut it just like it's a slice coming out of a piece of pie. So you're going to go in. It doesn't have to be perfect on those lines either. You're going to cut it on out. All right. there. And should you worry about getting some of the uh, lettuce fillings and stuff out with the piece or does that come later? Um, you can pull that out after you get it going. So now we have the nice piece. Slice it up and you can grab either with a spoon or your hands. You can pull a couple little bits on there and put it on top. Go. Dress it up and then, and then put sour cream right on top or on the side. Let me get Kevin a fork. I think he's going to like this a little bit too much. So, bon appetit. Let me give it a taste here. Mmm. It's 
a good one. It's precious. Mm. Nice and flaky and... Yeah, it's very good. It has a very solid flavor. And the dough complements the beef. Very good, Brenda. Very good. Enjoy Thank you very tailgate, much. Enjoy your tailgate, huh? Oh, yeah. I think this is going to be a great centerpiece for any occasion you have. Uh, just like Brenda was saying, family dinner, sporting events, parties, you name it. Well, this year, I predict the Super Bowl will house East Coast, West Coast teams of, let's say, the Seahawks and the Patriots. But I think the Patriots are going all the way this year. Go Pats! Woo! <laughs> My prediction? Broncos! Go Peyton! <laughs> Despite the shirt, 49ers. Next year, Eli. So it all, I'm getting my prediction. Everyone's wearing their different sporting gears tonight, but there's one gear that's not represented, and that's the Carolina Panthers. Gonna win it all Super Bowl against Denver Broncos. That's my predictions. So, it's a hard decision. Just kidding. <laughs> New England all the way. I think they are the strongest and most deepest team in the NFL. Super Bowl champions of 2013. Now, while uh, the guest chefs behind me are prepping, I'm going to uh, go ahead and make the artichoke jalapeno dip for you guys. And we'll start with two jars of, seven and a half ounce jars of uh, marinated artichoke hearts. And we're going to put, I'm a, uh, we'll put them on a cutting board and finely chop them. Because uh, you'll notice in the jar they're actually in larger chunks. Um, then what we're going to do is that we're going to put them into a casserole dish. So, then, once they're all in there, then we're going to take one cup fresh Parmesan cheese. We're going to take one cup mozzarella cheese. And we'll take seven ounce can of mild green chilies, diced. And uh, drain it a little bit too. And the artichokes are also drained from the jars, so uh, do not put them in with the juices. Then we're going to take one cup of mayonnaise. So move that over here. Like so, and kind of scrape it in there. All right. And then finally, we're going to do one clove. Uh, Fresh squeezed garlic. Let's rip it in there. Now, we're going to do the mixing. This is a mild dish. It's not spicy whatsoever, but it has delicious flavor. And we will end up baking it for 30 minutes in the oven at 350. Just mix it until it's well mixed. And when we put it in the oven to uh, cook until it starts to bubble and the cheese browns. So let's go ahead and put it in the oven and we'll bring it out and uh, then we'll move on to Amanda and she'll show us her delicious hummus. So right now we're going to send it over to Tim who has a fun little snippet for us as per uh, request of, by a viewer. Good, good evening sports fans with Cooking with Kevin today. Lots of sports are coming up. We're in the prime season of football playoff. Super Bowl. It's getting ready. Let's go. We've got some great action of sports coming up this winter. And basketball is halfway there in the season, so here comes the final push. And, you know, Blazers, Aldridge, he's going to be MVP. Let's go. And uh, just throwing it out there that, you know, everyone has their special sports with hockey. There's sports that we forget about. 
that people do watch, but... So, you know, these ingredients, these dips we're making, they're great tailgating for, you know, high school season. There's For football, there's tailgating all the time. Try it out at your next local sporting event you attend. And so here comes a special request by a special viewer. I'm going to try a wrap specially created by me, and I'm have a special appearance by Chef Kevin in the background. So let's give it a whirl, Kevin. <laughs> Clean it up in the kitchen. You're stirring. You're stirring it up, mixing it all together, making those dips to gather your taste buds. You have the big game coming on, and you're excited to cheer to your team on a victory. So when you're munching on those dips, remember that food that made that special dip. Dip in. And that's a special wrap, so have a great, great rest of your time in the kitchen making these special dips and enjoy and we'll catch you guys next season. And welcome back. Wow, wasn't that an amazing segment by Tim? <laughs> now we'll get this going with Amanda to get the hummus. So where do we start? Oh great. Well thank you again Kevin for having me back yes, on your show. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. All right, so today we are making homemade hummus, and the recipe that I used is I used one can of garbanzo, two cans of garbanzo beans, one can I did not strain out the juice, and one can I did. And we do need that extra bit of moisture to just make it a really smooth texture, and it just tastes a lot better that way. So we're going to go ahead and get in there. And then our next ingredient is tahini. And as Julie mentioned, you can use peanut butter as an alternative, but I personally like tahini. So if you can find tahini, I would use it. Probably has a distinct taste uh, and flavor to the hummus, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. How much approximately are you using? Um, this is a quarter cup. Okay. Quarter cup of tahini. And then we have a quarter cup of lemon juice. And a quarter cup of olive oil. Is that extra light it looks like? This is extra light. You can use regular too. Okay. All depends if you want to uh, risk having a little bit of an olive, extra olive oil, uh, virgin oil taste to your hummus. And then um, next ingredient, we have a teaspoon of salt mixed with an eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and the cayenne pepper gives it a nice little kick. Mm. And we have two cloves of garlic. And that is actually used for a garnish on the, the topping. Edge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Okay. So let's go ahead and secure the lid and give it a couple of pulses. I would say about 30 seconds or a minute, just depending on what kind of consistency you would like. So I personally like it more of a creamy consistency, so I'm going to continue blending it. All right. Well, while it's uh, blending, we're going to send it uh, for just some comment info, so we'll be right back. Welcome back. 
So we have both the hummus and the archer jalapeno dip finished, but we're gonna show off the finished product of this outstanding hummus. This looks so professional, Amanda. Great job. Now, what is uh, uh, garnished on the top here? I basically used some parsley, and then I um, sprinkled some paprika. And as an alternative, you can use cilantro instead, which is a nice substitute as well. And if someone wanted to thicken it, uh, uh, for a, like you more a, of a thick consistency, what would they do? Oh, the only other thing um, they could do would be to reduce the amount of liquid that's in the garbanzo beans. So maybe strain both? So strain both and uh -huh. then keep the liquid and then gradually add it. Excellent. I would say um, a tablespoon at a time until you get the consistency you'd like. Perfect. Perfect. And, uh, and then for the outro jalapeno dip, uh, as you can see, it started getting browned on the to uh, the sides and then the top kind of coated over. That is perfect. And um, so let it cool for just uh, you know a few minutes. You do not want to serve it hot, but you do want to serve it warm. It's ideal. So um, we're going to sample here now. Mmm. Mm. Very good. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Mmm. Let's try a little bit. This little bad boy. Mm. So what uh, we of course waited for it to brown and then thicken up on the top and served it warm. It is a delicious uh, dip that everyone will love. And uh, the hummus of course is a delightfully light treat that is healthy. And then uh, the taco ring will be a family favorite guaranteed. So to end this season, I had a, an apron actually made for me by one of our viewers and sent in, and it is fantastic. It has a cooking side and a presentation side. Now I want to thank personally Clara from Salem, Oregon. This is very cool, and I will be sporting this this next season for any specials that are a feature on the show. So thanks again for your continued support. Thanks again to you, Amanda, and I hope to see you next year at the uh, last part of August at the start of Season 2. As always, I hope you keep cooking with Kevin. Mm -hmm.